Okay, hi everyone. So today we're going to be talking about mutators and accessors. Um, basically methods that have really weird names, but uh, you'll see why they're used. All right. So mutator methods. These are methods that change values of attributes and we call these methods mutators. They have a, um, well, basically no return. Okay, they, they have a void return type. So here's an example right here. So we got a class called person inside of it. We've got a, a function, a, a method. And this method right here is called uh, gain weight and it has an input parameter like this. And these units are used in an equation where we update the attribute of the person, their weight, with some value called units. It changes the person. It changes the object. It mutates the object. Here's another example uh, for the class point. So we've got uh, a method right here. It has a void uh, return type. We say move up. We don't have any input parameter right here, but basically it's move up by one. So then we say we update the, uh, the internal attribute for this class that becomes an object by a value of one. Every time we call the method move up, this is mutating the object that comes from point that's defined by point, or it's mutating the object based on person, mutating it like this, okay? Uh, and, and we're basically changing an internal characteristic, an inter internal attribute. All right, on the other hand, accessors. These methods return the result of computation based on attribute values. So in one case, we're modifying internally what's going on. In the other case, we're making some calculation and returning it back. So it has a non-void return type, okay? So here's an example right here. We want to get the person's BMI. So here's a, a, a method, a function, has a return type of double. And, uh, and what we have right here is an equation that says BMI is equal to the person's height, that's a characteristic, an attribute, their weight, uh, multiplied by their weight. And again, there's a division right there and we return that value like that. We are accessing something about the person. Okay, same with point right here. We're accessing distance from origin. We're getting access, we're getting distance from origin and we have no input argument right there, but we are going to return some value. So basically we're getting things when we're using the accessors. So, here are some important distinctions that, that we need to sort of take into consideration. So calls to mutator methods, so changing, another way to say it would be changing methods, okay? Or changer methods cannot be used as values. So for instance, we can't use this inside of the parentheses of print line because it won't output anything. Okay, so that's a big fat X right there. Next, um, in this case right here, we can't assign any value to W. So that's gonna be another no right there. And right here, um, we, let's see, what are we doing here? We're saying set weight on gym. So dot set weight. I think, we, I think that might work, right? So yeah, that's, that's okay because we're not returning anything. We're just setting something internally, all right? So we're changing something internally no problem, that's good for mutators. So the first example, no good, because we're trying to return something. Second one, no good, because we're trying to return something. But in the last case, we're not actually returning anything. We don't need to. We're just changing something basically internally. That's a mutator. Next up, we have calls to accessor methods that should be used as values, okay? So for instance, if I go like this, I go gym.getBMI. I'm not assigning it to a variable, so that, that doesn't work. Okay, that's, a, that's an X right there. System out print line gym .get BMI. So I'm gonna get some value and I'm putting it as sort of an input parameter for my print line. That should pr probably, yeah, and it does, it does work. The first one was no good. Second one, definitely a good example. Double W, so we're gonna assign a value to W right here using the equal sign right there. That should probably work, yep, yeah, and sure it does, okay? So those are three examples right there as well. So principle number one, a constructor needs an input. So we talked about constructors in a previous video. A constructor needs an input parameter for each attribute that you wish to initialize. You don't have to initialize 
all attributes, but each one that you do want to, you have to have an input parameter for it. So for instance, uh, if I have a, um, a constructor for a class called person, and I have a double precision floating point called W, say for weight, and double for height, that'd be okay. Person, uh, first name, and last name, where the two input parameters are strings. Yeah, I don't necessarily have to initialize their weight and height here, and I don't have to initialize their, their names, first or last name, here in this example right here because we can you we can have other methods down the road for, for for making that happen so principle number two so that was constructors now we're looking at mutators so a mutator method needs an input parameter for each attribute that you wish to modify or mutate or change okay so here's a pair of examples right here so it's not really versus it's like and okay so in point, if we did void move to x axis, that could work, all right, um, because the the changes would be internal. Void move up by where we want to actually specify an ex a value from the outside in terms of how much it's going to move. That itself would work as well. Principle number three: an accessor method needs to have input parameters if the attributes alone are not sufficient for the intended computation to complete, because that's so here's, here's two examples here. So not versus, this is going to be and. So in point, in the object that are created from the class called point, we have double get distance from origin. We don't need to have any input parameters right there. On the other hand, if uh, we want to get distance from an object, we have to specify what that other object would be, what that other point would be. That would make sense having an input argument right there. 